So in last week's lesson, I talked about the Ford method and how amazing of a tool that has been, right, for me personally, and how much it could benefit other people. And this week's lesson, I or this week's life lesson that I experienced, right, is going to be about Carnegie, right? And I'm sure some people that heard that name were probably like, I recognize that. And specifically when I was talking about using people's names and all that. So Dale Carnegie wrote a book uh, collaboratively with a few other people called How to Win Friends and Influence People. This book is an old book, like an old, old book. When you read the original, that's not been adapted for modern times. When you read the original, like he's talking about Henry Ford, he's talking about some old school people, right? But the reality is the lessons that he is putting forth in that book are tremendously valuable. And since going through and studying that book, I've had a lot of opportunities to watch these things in practice, consistently done, right? So for instance, one of the lessons that he put through, right, is to kind of take the blame on yourself, right? And I'm going to really paraphrase a lot of this stuff because it's not my content, right? I'm just talking about the value of it. But Dale Carnegie talks about, you know, take the blame onto yourself. Make yourself sound like you are likely the problem. I have an employee that does this all the time right now. And it makes me laugh every time I hear it because I recognize where it's coming from, right? And he'll start a lesson off with, well, you're not wrong and or something along the lines of, well, I always reserve the right to be wrong in my assumptions. However, I would like to ask blah, 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 right? And it is funny how much when you immediately say, I'm probably wrong, it takes the person off of defense, right? When you hear me talking about using somebody's name, I have tried this in multiple different cultures around the world, and it is insane how effective using someone's name is. There is a there is a clerk at one of the restaurants that I eat at relatively frequently. And you know, this is I'm in Japan right now. You're talking a more reserved society. They don't really do a lot of things like that. When I use her name, when I greet her, right? And I go to pay and I go to greet her and I ask her about herself and I notice new jewelry and I do things like that. She, the way that her eyes light up and as excited as she gets every single time uh, is amazing, right? And there have been times where, let's say, um, I didn't realize that the card I was using was not the right card to use for this particular uh, transaction, right? They have like a little loyalty card that you can use. And she's given me stamps anyway, even when really I didn't, I shouldn't have gotten one because I didn't buy what I needed to get that stamp just because she likes me and the way that I greet her, right? This has gone further than that, right? I've been upgraded the first class on flights. I've been given better hotel rooms. I've been given extra food at restaurants. There's been so many different things that I've been able to achieve through Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People. So while this is a very old and very big book, and you know, for me, it was kind of hard for me to get through that whole thing. I had to do it on Audible and I'm just like, ah, this is really long, right? I will say the lessons that it puts forward are amazing because almost every single one of them are very easy to implement and help you get through a lot of stuff, especially when you start talking about negotiations. You know, um, they don't call out the term BATNA by uh, name, which is best alternative to a negotiated um, agreement, right? So they don't call BATNA out by name, but they teach you a lot of the skills that you need to negotiate those things. You know, well, we have this disagreement right now, and man, this is really tough. How can we find a solution that meets what you're looking for and gets me what I want, and we can both walk away feeling like both of us won instead of, you know, having to go through a process where one of us feels like we lost, the other one feels like they won, or having to go through a process where no deal is reached right? Because no deal is reached is usually a pretty bad thing, right? So I will restate 
how to win friends and influence people, Dale Carnegie's lessons were very valuable. And I will further add to become even more valuable in modern day, right? Because in modern society, one little video, one thing said wrong on something like this, there's a lot of risk associated with this, right? If you say one wrong thing and it gets platformed, eesh, that's a tough situation to be in, right? Uh, I've known people who have mistakenly said things like it wasn't even what they wanted to say. They got tongue tied and accidentally used the wrong word and have really suffered because they've used the wrong word and ended up having to invest in PR people to help fix the outcome of what it was that they did. You know, because it's like, oops, I didn't like I don't even feel that way. I didn't mean to say it that way. It just came out that way. I've had faux pas. Like I was on a stage one time and I didn't know that um, intellectually disabled is the new term for mentally retarded. I didn't know that. And I was speaking before hundreds of people in person and thousands of people online. And I mentioned how I used to work in a medical treatment facility uh, tending to category three and four mentally retarded patients. That was the medical diagnoses that they received back then. And because I hadn't been in the field, I didn't know that changed. There were literal gas. And that surprised me so much when I heard literal gasping in the crowd when I said that term. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> you know, because it was like, oh, I just said a no-no or something. I got to look that up later. And when I was approached by people who felt offended by the use of of language that I had, um, you know, I was able to mellow that over and, you know, win them back over to a position of support, right? Because I acknowledged what it was that they were saying. I clearly communicated that was my fault. I own my mistake. You know, and I asked them, how can I be better at this? And I solicited their opinions and their ideas to be able to make it to where, okay, well, that's pretty awesome. How would you recommend I do that? You know, sometimes I speak, you know, I'm, I'm so focused on not doing the wrong thing that sometimes our blinders get on and we miss out little pieces like that. How can I be better? And, you know, they feel awesome at the end of that dialogue because they feel like they helped me to become a better speaker in that kind of arena. So I will say um, it is absolutely phenomenal to be able to utilize Dale Carnegie's information and to be able to make that difference. It is absolutely phenomenal for me. It was a tough read, but it was definitely worth it. So thank you, and I hope you have a great day.